There we go. It sinks. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, are you ready? Indeed. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Infinity Chat. I am joined by a wonderful musician, oh. a very, very talented multi instrumentalist, oh. Cameron Scott. Um, you might have Some seen him advertised. So. <laughs> Some might say. <laughs> you, you might have seen him advertised uh, on my channel and in my description. Uh, so, hi, Cameron. Uh, Hello. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today we'll be discussing uh, t um, a bunch of horror films, I believe. A bunch of horror films, so, yes. First, we'll be starting off with fairly recent horror films, I believe. So, um, two of uh, Jordan Peele's latest releases. So, yes. Us and Get Out. Us and Get Out. Um, so, context, uh, we have just watched, just about just watched Get Out, um, yes. the first of Jordan Peele's uh, duology? Not it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, I think they're connected in a way. They're connected in a way. Yeah, I, I was reading some theory about it, but I don't think they are. they're not it's, that connected. Yeah, it's yeah. it's sort of it's the music, the soundtrack is very similar. By the way, spoilers um, for both for a lot of horror films in this. Oops. Um, so there will be spoilers. Yes, the, so, some spoilers. <laughs> Difficult to talk about it. About uh, spoilers. Yeah, yeah, some spoilers. Yeah. So for the thing, uh, so go watch the thing. Mm. Um, Paranormal yeah. Activity, maybe. Yes. Um, get out us. Uh, and, and Alien. Alien, yeah. of course, yeah, Alien, uh, the original 1980s yeah. Alien. Indeed. Which um, my first viewing of was in the cinema. In the cinema, yeah. Weirdly. We watched I watched, I was, uh, we've watched a lot of his horror films together. So we've, We have, we've, yeah. Uh, we've, yeah. Um, also context, me and Cameron are fascinated by horror. Yes. Um, we we actually love it. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much all we watch. That's what we watch together. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like horror. My... I, I do really, really like my most loved gen genres are like sci fi and like, mm. um, and, and, oh, I don't know, like, I guess, I guess sci fi and maybe r weirdly romance because of La La Land, but also oh, yeah. like, um, musicals. Because I, you know, I say weirdly romance because like I never used to be into romance, but now I sort of am. And also, I'm not massively into musicals. That's the weird thing. But mm. I like La La Land. Start, yeah. yeah, you'll have to see La La Land. But um, I have a really, really like massive love for horror. Like, because yeah. because I used to um, I used to play a lot of horror games. I still do play some horror games. We we've been playing some horror games. Playing with Outlast, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. We will yeah. be doing an Outlast Let's Play at some point. Mm. Um, we can bring ourselves to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once we can do it, um, we've sort of run out of time today. We filmed mm. uh, a baking video, and we're filming this today, yeah, so, so it's quite a big thing. Oh, footage. Um, but yes, so this episode of the Infinity Chat is going to surround <laughs> horror, my 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 loved my loved genre over the years. Um, I actually first got into horror, like the idea of horror, through. Um, well, I like Scooby Doo first of all. Oh, yes, <laughs> That's yeah. one thing I would have mentioned. Well, the well renowned. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, I love Scooby Doo, and also mm, I sort of started watching PewDiePie's Let's Plays of horror games. I did. I, did you watch it when we used to play Amnesia quite a lot? Yeah, back yeah, in the day, yeah. Low, yeah, I yeah, those, yeah, yeah. I oh, yeah. I love them so much, and like, yeah, I I got into it through that, and um, also sort of like. Things of to do to, to do with Scooby Doo have helped with my love of horror um, as I grew up and stuff. And yeah, basically, I love the genre, all types of the genre. Um, not necessarily zombie films, but I do like Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, that is a, is a classic. That is a classic. So, I guess I got into horror films. Um, yes, at a fairly Cameron. fairly early age. I, I think I first watched Alien. Alien was my first proper introduction to horror. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. when I was about uh, 10 years old. <laughs> uh, I love sounds, this so much. Sounds a bit dodgy, but <laughs> it wasn't really that... I didn't find it that yeah. scary. Yeah. I It was scary. And the first time I watched it, I didn't fully... Well, I sort of... I, I was like doing something on a computer whilst watching it. Yeah. Because it, obviously, a 10-year-old watching a, a, yeah. a horror film probably yeah, wants, to, wants to sort of test it out on new ground. But I mean, I'll, yeah, after that, I've sort of... Over the years, I've just watched various horror films. Um, like I think I've also watched. Um, got, when I was about that sort of age, I watched um, uh, Poltergeist. Was another one. 
Oh um, yeah, was, yeah. And then obviously the Shining. I watched uh, around that sort of time. I was sort of throughout. Oh I've, man, I've, I've scratched the, the Shining. Built we'll up to see my that repertoire. Together. Definitely, yeah, that's another. That's another one. Yeah, I've really built up my repertoire throughout the years. Um, and then recently, I've been seeing films like Get Us. The Get Us. Get Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are mixed. You see, no. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, get um, get out, out yeah. and get us uh, <laughs> get us. <laughs> get that's our, a different film entirely. Get no. us out. That's a so yeah. Uh, moving on, that little like, diversion there. Uh, I recently I've also watched. Um, uh, what else have I watched quite recently for the first time? A few other classic horror films. Um, Halloween. Seen the Exorcist. We had neither of us have seen The Exorcist. So we're yeah. going to watch that together. Mm. Be and fun. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street as well. Yeah, never seen that. Oh, I've or, never seen either. Yeah, so, so we've got lots of things. So there's so many out there. I feel like I've covered so much, but there's so much more to go. Yeah. Oh man. So, Get Out. We recently mm. watched it uh, after a very large Chinese takeaway. Indeed. Yeah. Um, and so I went into the film. So I heard of get out through uh various film sources i i watch um you know youtubers like uh sammy paul jack howard uh, i heard them talking about it and sammy paul sort of gave a brief description but no spoilers sort of like uh main themes were race but also that it he didn't really give away much about what was what was sort of going on about it mm. um and i went into the film very very blind and it yeah. was very, very, very terrifying. <laughs> yeah. it, it, lots of twists and turns, definitely. Mm. And ah, oh, the, the the premise is so brilliant. So basically, um, there's um, the the main character Chris. Um, I don't can't remember his second name. Chris uh, Washington or Washington? Uh, Washington, that was it. Chris Washington. Washington, yeah. yeah. And. Um, the other person. I've only watched the film once. I'm sorry. Uh, it is the. Ah, um, uh, it's a good question. They're with family. The cra- Armitages. Yeah. Yes, the Armitage. Armitages. Right. I can't okay. So at all, but. massive spoilers. Stop watching. You haven't watched uh, Get Out. Yeah. Um. So, um, Chris is uh, an African American uh, guy, and whatever her name is, uh, is <laughs> something Armitage um, is part of a white family, and that sort of and and the premise is chris is um worried about her family's reaction mm. um to to him uh and you know the the girl is basically like don't worry about it obviously she, though, like you know at the early stages of the film she comes across as very sort of um liberal and liberal minded and the fact that she's very she's uh, she yeah. for example when um, the police officer um sort of unjustly tries to check for his id yeah. even though he, she was the one driving she sort of stands up for him and that kind of thing and then she's always pointing out sort of her family's sort of slightly um racist or sort of uncomfortable tendencies uh, the way they treat uh, the way they treat chris so I it's quite fascinating how it's only a sudden transformation of her character when she's just as part of the exploitation as, as as the rest of her family, she's one of the key instigators of it. So, yeah, it's literally it's terrifying to watch that switch mm. of of like personality. Yeah, and like, oh man, it's just like manipulation. You know, to, to be firstly, extreme. you're just like regular person um, who is very nice uh, and like obviously accepting. Because the thing mm. is, I think a lot of it is um, to do with like. Uh, the sort of hidden uh, racism, kind yeah. of, and and the film plays really well um, in that in, field, that, in yeah. that field. Uh, it very much, yeah. Sort of, it, it, it's very the way, the way the way like it's very very uncomfortable how all the characters of in the setting constantly bring up the issue of race. So even if even if it sounds like they're sort of trying to be sort of like they're trying to be accepting or like it just it yeah. makes makes the main character Chris very uncomfortable because he's they're constantly bringing this up as always at the back of his mind. Yeah, and then he realizes why all these constant references are because of um, their intention of. Uh, of uh, well, the thing we'll come on to later. Oh um, man, yeah, that's so very, actually very, <laughs> very disturbing concept of uh, having it's one's horrible. brain transplanted into uh, the body Whoa, of another. Okay, so, yeah, <laughs> it's quite a quite an intense, uh... genuinely horrifying. Um, I would say that again, like you know, there's so much strength. Um, the director uh, obviously directs the cinematography extremely well. Mm, so so many clever shots. Yeah. Very very clever shots that um, 
emphasize the uh, insecurity that Chris feels. Like in, and one it- notable shot actually is um, when he first meets. Um, the Armitage. So at the beginning of the film, there's all this build up the idea of him um, being scared about meeting her her, p- her parents and because she hadn't told them that he was black, etc. And then suddenly, when that shot does actually happen, it sort of zooms out and it's sort of it's almost like it's not particularly dramatic. The the meeting between the parents yeah. and the uh, and the um, the new, or well, I'm not sure if they're married or not, but the uh, the couple. Yeah. And so it sort of it zooms out in like a sense as if they're being isolated or he's now isolated with them or something, um, and now he's trapped in there um, without trapped off in the outside world um, in this new community where everyone's completely insane and believes in this ridiculous, um, unethical uh, technology yeah, of transplantation. It's, it's literally mm. horrible. Um, yeah, so I, I'd say like the introduction is just as scary as the ending in a way. Like It's, mm. it's kind of like... Very, yeah, that's it's a very effective build Shocking, up. yeah, shocking introduction. And yeah, I think that's the character, um, the guy in the hat... Um, who's with the older woman at the beginning yeah. of the film? He's this. He's um. Oh yeah, Andre. Yeah, yeah. And because he's so different when you see him. You sort of you have to look really closely, and it's shot in a, on a dark night in the suburbs. So it's very difficult to work out if that's the same person or not. So it's like when you make that link, it's like oh wow. Yeah, so, yeah. it's it's like it's like um yeah the, the connections between the beginning and the end. I know that I noted one connection. Uh, I oh my gosh, you know what? What was it? Um. The can you remember what what I said? Because I said something. Was it about um, the? Oh, it was the uh, when you said the black mold in the cellar. Oh yeah, referring yeah. Referring yeah. to the idea of um, having yeah, obviously the, the, the yeah, brain so of the. There's like constant um, references, so to to like to race, color, hmm. etc. And the beginning, it's it's so creepy the way they do it, but it's it's obvious that. There's something not quite right, although you sort of feel somewhat secure, but it's something not quite right. There's something I think when you when you meet the uh, the groundskeeper characters, um, oh, the maid. Yeah. When you, I think that's what that's the main point part of that film, that part, first part of the film, which is very uncomfortable to watch the way they. Yeah. The way, but when you realise later on, it's because the reason why it's so unnatural is because it's basically old white person in the body of a younger black person. Yeah. And it's a very very weird, um, very weird amalgamation of it. And it's, it's, that's what makes it so uncomfortable. Yeah. So mm. essentially. Um, they the this family the uh the his, chris's partner's family Armitage, yeah Armitage's. Armitage's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they um they're the white family who have um they have black uh groundskeepers and initially you know chris goes up to them and say hey you're uh, you're you're you know hard at work and stuff you know are they are they working you hard or whatever and um the guy just does like like this sort of weird smile mm. and it's just like, like oh not uh, anything that i'm uh not happy to do and stuff like that right. and you and i'm it, there's and the music all it all complements such a perfect like introduction to to the idea that something is really not quite right mm. um so Post viewers time. might be wondering what on earth are we talking about with brains yeah, i've gone straight so, gone straight to the deep end there <laughs> we yeah yeah we you're assuming bit. you've seen it before yeah. when you're watching this podcast so uh a little sip of water there. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm just... Uh, it's really down. hot in England right now. It's very... Yeah. It's. It, I mean, it's quite grey, but it's sort of... It, it was very humid, like, yeah. yeah it's so humid. It's even and raining. especially with that light. Thanks, light. Uh, <laughs> thanks for lighting us. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so what was it? So, uh, the brain stuff, yes. So, mm. um, essentially, essentially, what's revealed at the end is that the White family have been luring... Um, a lot of um, uh, black people to their house, yeah. and what they do is they sort of transplant their brain. So they have a lot of relatives or friends or relatives um, who are also like the, the like they're they're part of this um, massive family mm. or something. I think I kind of it's, think that's what it I is. think it's lots of rich white people. I think. Oh that's the right, yeah. And there's one Japanese guy as well. I think I seem to remember. And then the oh the yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're sort of all all. Um, uh, they all know what's up, but basically, what's happening is the the guy at the house, um, the head Armitage, if you like, head, the, uh, the is big, is a neurosurgeon, guy, yeah. and you think, oh right, he's a neurosurgeon. Um, well, to do you know, guy. like I mean, cool. That's 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 interesting mm. job because neurosurgery is pretty awesome, but it turns out that it is very creepy because yeah. uh, he takes he sort of with with the help of. Um, his wife, the head Armitage, um, 
Head Armitage's wife. Uh, he hypnotizes um, all the black people and takes their brains, sort of, and transplants. So if somebody, it- if somebody in like the, their friend group has like an issue like for example some uh, th- there's this guy who can't see he's a mm. blind photographer or like your your hand, your arm isn't quite quite broken working. or something like that golfer yeah. for example who wants yeah, a new yeah. uh, fresh uh, start <laughs> yeah yeah and so what um what what the what the what the head armitage does is uh he basically puts the um affected person's mind um into uh, the black person's body, yeah. and that is creepy as hell. It's um, very, very weird. And basically, the, how the hypnosis body works horror. is they have to hip- hypnotize the black people first because what they do is That's they like it acts as like a drug, um, yeah, sort of to to suppress their actual consciousness. Mm. And it's it's genuinely like really horrifying because you just horrible think, like, concept. Yeah, you're trapped forever in this void in your mm. in your own head and in a body like that's no longer a violation. fully yours, and what instantly came to me as soon as I watched the, the movie, as soon as I finished it, is that it's really reminiscent of like um, the slave era when mm. it, it's it's very sort of like metaphorical in my mind um, for how um, the uh, rich white people uh, took advantage of um, the, the the black people uh, mm. of the of the community and they enslaved them but this this film is like it's metaphorically like direct enslavement by mm. inhabiting their body what was it and you're saying like, it was like the yeah. um the the fact they were suppressing their their true their true mind yeah um within that because they're not allowed because they were yeah. never allowed to speak mm. because of the um because of the oppression mm. and like the fact that they're not allowed to speak also in the movie it kind of represents that era and i think that's really really clever if that was the intention that's it's really mm. really clever it's very interesting that's how i read yeah. it mm. um because of because of how horrifying it is um it's really reminiscent of mm. real life and that's really terrifying um and i love how the director and, and writer did that yeah very yeah very much very much very so, yeah. very effective very yeah, lots of throughout the, every every scene has a purpose every imagery every piece of symbolism within yeah. the film has a, a direct purpose for example um like the deer's head i was reading is um actually um, symbolic of innocence so um or uh, allegedly i mean there's probably more readings of it but i mean um when obviously when it hits them at the start of the film that's almost like the death of innocence and then yeah uh, his mind's he's sort of he's realized the true nature of um how how his how his community carries on and what horrible attitude that people still have and the exploitation of um of his own race yeah and so he's now he's now aware of it completely um, so that, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I wonder if there was ever. I'm, I probably wouldn't be any point for a sequel because now they're all dead. <laughs> the family technically, so there's not much point in resurrecting it. But um, quite interesting to see how his character develops past that point. Now he's aware of the fact that there's still a horrific, this horrific, um, effectively racism, or even worse than that in, in many many respects. This the ap- the absolute embodiment of the idea of slavery. Yeah. And um, the the worst possible um form it could take. Yeah. And now in that, in the modern world, which is a very very interesting, uh, cause like it is a very interesting mm. concept. And like, um, if you so yeah yeah so um, Get Out and Us were both directed by Jordan Peele. They're not connected direct. They're not, they're not connected. There's no yeah, but there's mm. no connection. But um, I found that you can sort of tell that it's the same director because of the music the music yeah and the style soundtrack. of many of and also and the style of the one shots. thing you noticed um, was how some of the actors move it's quite almost like they're dancing oh yeah that's what i it's said like, yeah it's all so, obvious it's more yeah. obvious than us i suppose with the whole ballet dancing oh, um, yeah, of the yeah. character but then also sometimes the way in particular the way the granny in the film or the, the granny within the uh, maid's body the way she moves is quite um quite um, sort of, she slinks around quite a lot. In the yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parts, which yeah, are quite does, reminiscent yeah. of um, the dance, like, like playing with her hair like this, mm. and it's almost it's all, like it's choreographed. It. Yeah, like it's like um, it's it's kind of like the sort of uh, very fluid movements in us, mm. which which sort of uh, which which are very clever, actually, very yeah. clever choreograph uh, and choreography it's... and direction. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Um, so yes. Um, uh, us 2019 
Um, two the, years after Get Out, I believe. Yeah, two, yeah, yes. two years. So the mm. second uh, Jordan film, Peel, Jordan Peel film in <laughs> two years. Jeez, um, I'm, get a, us, I'm a bit tired. Get us and out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah. Get, get. What do you say? Get us or something. Get out. Uh, <laughs> Get us or something. Get get us get, get us, us out. out. Get us out. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah. So uh, us. Um, it is. Wow. It was. We watched it in the cinema. Um, it's a very intense film. Is very very intense. Um, mm. I saw. So I roughly sort of knew before beforehand. I sort of thought right. Okay. Uh, so it's sort of like clones maybe but but the revelations are incredible within mm. the film um yeah so jordan peele's second film us really delivers quite a uh quite an in, insane uh a, 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 another incredible like um concept uh, mm. for like like an imaginative concept um for what occurs in the film uh, and the title is very significant as well because mm. it's you know it's monosyllabic it's you know one word it's like it, it could, could be, mean so many different things. It could be us, as in us, plural, or it could be um, US, a commentary, US, a commentary yes. on the US society. Yeah, absolutely. And I mm. saw that online, um, mm. so. and it's like, oh, it was, it's like United States. I can't, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm not going to be <laughs> very, um, uh, very, very fluent in this film because I saw it um, ages ago. Yeah, it was but Easter, we lost, yeah. It does stick in my memory quite well. Like, um, there are some very, very disturbing scenes poignant uh, yeah. very poignant scenes as well mm. um and the revelation so essentially what happens is um uh we uh meet this family uh this little girl uh begins to get lost in a mm. fairground this, yeah. area and she gets lost in like a mirror place it's like a, one of those mi- yeah it's one of those weird like uh weird, twi- like distorted mirror distorted places mirror yeah you get and that's horrible. creepy to say mm. do you know fun fact right I don't know if I've told told you this before, actually. <laughs> but I'm... fun fact: one of my really massive fears. Um, hang on, I just just got to check behind me. There might be something behind me. <laughs> no, um, one of my biggest fears is looking into a mirror, especially in the dark. And that, I know it's weird, but that's it's like, interesting because like... um, because I'm so used. To, so when I take off my glasses, everything is incredibly blurry, right? Hmm. And I can't explain it, but it's like it it's it's as if my reflection. In, because it's in the dark, it's as, if, it's as if my reflection sort of moves on its own, and it's very weird. It's like a weird sight. It's, quite, it's like a classic horror film trope when you you yeah. you open like the cabinet, you to get to get something like to get like um, tablets from like the cabinet in the bathroom or something. And you close you close it, and then there's a mirror, and suddenly something's behind you. Something, yeah. Like, I watched a film of that quite recently, actually, um, a horror film. I can't remember exactly what it was. It might have been Halloween, actually, um, where but I could, I could be completely wrong. But there was a film where so you close in something behind you or and sometimes it's a false jump scare sometimes it's a real one it's quite oh my gosh yeah quite That's overused it. but like very very effectively managed in this form i think yeah no yeah. i think it's yeah. i think in in us it's very very effectively because that especially being one of my massive like really really big fears well at about at 2 a.m at least when i get up <laughs> and i don't have my glasses on because <laughs> everything's super blurry and it's mm. like I can't really see my face, and it's like I'm faceless in the mirror, and it's yeah. really horrible. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so what That's happens it. is um, the little girl looks around. She gets to the end of this area, and she looks, and she thinks it's her reflection, but then it turns it's, around. it's not a mirror, and mm. it turns around, and it doesn't face her, and then it turns around again, and then it cuts it away, and it's yeah. like... That's a complete mystery, that section. Yeah. Whoa. And then... What okay, so the thing is, um, th- so this this girl, there's another girl, right? So because it's sort of like a reflection, but not really, it's not a reflection, it turns out that it's actually a physical being, and it's her, but like from a sort of it's her, it's this, it's sort of a clone of her, but one that doesn't know how to speak, and like, mm. and they're all, they're all sort of like it's interesting. I was, um, I had a quick look up to remind myself of uh, various aspects with regards to the whole. Uh, cloning in the film, yeah. and uh, I think I read it was some kind of uh, some kind of experiment where they recreated or um, well, cloned people, but they're unable to replicate their soul. So effectively, yeah, they had no, no yeah, personality. Thing, yeah. They had yeah. no sort of function within the, like uh, within, within, within the normal society. However, the reason why the interesting thing, which is revealed right at the end of us, um, why she. <clears throat> 
Well, the only character from that sort of underground layer, uh, who the only one who could speak is um, her own clone, is because when she met her in the uh, fairground or the mirror thing, the the person who was originally the person on the ground um, swapped places with her. Um, sort of, so she dragged her back into that yeah. layer, and obviously because her as a little girl growing up on the upper world was now underneath world. She 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 was the most intelligent, the one who could speak. Yeah. Um, whereas the one who'd um, made her way up to land learned how to live like a normal human being. Yeah. And obviously learned how to speak, and they all thought it was trauma why she couldn't actually speak. But then it Initially, turned out to be, yeah. It turned out to be the reason why she didn't speak is because she <laughs> she was yeah. a clone without a soul. <laughs> and it's <laughs> that's terrifying, <laughs> but also like. The I I initially read into it um, my own personal interpretation. It's just like it was sort of complicated because it's like um, maybe it's to do with like uh, perceptions of uh, intelligence or like perceptions of um, people from different backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, but I read into it and it's about like so it, it, one interpretation is you US in the title mm. uh, re- references the United States and like the economy I can't actually remember what the thing is but I, I don't know if you can remember it but it's sort of like um, classism kind of yeah so the alienation of the uh the working class and then and sort of it's almost like a interesting eyes is like almost like it's a um the working class sort of um, an uprising against the ruling classes for example like maybe like the bolsheviks in russia the raw i'm not entirely sure if i'm <laughs> don't, don't quote me uh scientific or historically on this but no, well, i think yeah. it was the working class who up who rose up against the uh the uh ruling classes because obviously they're they quite an outdated system of um this is getting historical now they're quite an outdated system of um uh i think it was like there's a particular system where where people live off land your servants live off land for their masters and it was quite a, even back in the 1900s 1800s it was quite an outdated system um and so they, they rose up against that um it's almost it's quite interesting it could be seen as almost a parallel to that um but like a highlighting, yeah. highlighting it even within today's society well, it's yeah not, not getting yeah too political but that could be his, uh, it's, his it's sort of, to... it could be that and i don't know it's it's a very it's it's a like um it's it's like it's almost like an arty film and what I what I mean by an arty film is something that is very sort of interpretation based. Open, yeah, open to uh, very in, o- very open. Um, and a lot of films are, but I I feel like um, some films are really really sort of I, and and also I think another th- where another meaning um, by which I mean you know uh, arty film I I sort of mean. Uh, yeah, another meaning for me is good, cin- like insanely high yeah. concept cinematography. Like yeah. the, the every shot shots, has every shot, shot has is... a meaning. Like yeah, that exactly, shot yeah. I was talking about in Get Out, where it's like zoomed in when he meets the parents. Yeah, and yeah. In yeah. Uh, within, uh, I'm trying to remember a, a particularly standout shot uh, within that film. Um, I think actually probably the shot right at the beginning of the rabbits in the cage. Oh, that was quite yeah. an interesting one. I, I still don't know what the rabbits symbolise. There was something very sort of like uncomfortable about that shot of the music and the gradually zooming in very or zooming out of that that particular it was very yeah I said we need to <laughs> re um, re remind myself about what the, the symbolism behind those yeah rabbits. no yeah. definitely I'm, I yeah. mean on very sort of reflective glance it could be like like a um, they the the people underground symbolize symbolize um, the perceptions of the uh, the upper class people uh, mm. uh, of of the like lower class the, as in like you know the the lower earners and like you how know, they, 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 how, how they can't yeah. speak and like they yeah how they see them exactly like, cases, yeah. and also um, they only eat one thing and they sort of they're, they're sort of savages in a way and mm. like yeah that's they only eat the rabbits is that yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. so sort of like and and the way they eat as oh, well so yeah. they they sort of like you know have like bones and stuff yeah. coming up and and yeah it was it was really creepy but also uh really really interesting mm. really interesting a fascinating film another thing which is um particularly in jordan peele's style of horror writing he always he always has an element of comedy in there 
Um, oh, often, yeah. often within, I know We've, within, I discovered that, within yeah. the middle of a film, there's always like a little sort of a light, lighter segment, or not lighter, but in, in Us, it was a scene where she uh, tries to cover police and then uh, that, that tune, the fuck the police, comes on <laughs> instead, um, which yeah. is a particularly, particularly funny moment. So sort of, I like, I like yeah. that sort of morbid yeah. a horror film which doesn't take itself too seriously. It's often more morbid and sort of satisfying than a horror film that does. It's like comic relief and it's like, um, it's kind of like a Shakespeare comic relief, isn't it? A little yeah, bit. it's kind of like yeah. that section. So the stupid, the, 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 the fool who like who like gives us like or a the clown or dramatic yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, something else uh, that's sorry. I'm just I'm just checking the recording. Oh yes, uh, everybody. <laughs> it's just, I'm not. I'm 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 aware of technical glitches here. Um, so uh, another sorry. another interesting. Uh, yeah, another one that we watched in the cinema, which Indeed. we were very lucky. We're not time travellers. Um, yes. No, I'm not a time traveller because I watched it first time in the cinema, mm. which I shouldn't really have been able to do, but it was the 40th yes. anniversary of it. It is, of course, Alien. Mm. Um, just sort of segueing into it. Well, this, but, this is um, my film. This is my favourite horror film of all time. This <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you, you, hopefully you'll be able to shed some light because Ooh. I have only watched it once. Um, Be- so my interpretations, my sort of uh, my the things that I've taken away from it. Maybe you, you obviously you've taken away a lot more from it than Ooh. I have, and, and maybe sort of a bit more information. Uh, so, uh, Alien, my first viewing, my first experience, it was brilliant. Um, I I absolutely loved the score. Uh, yes. Ridley Scott, uh, obviously had you know a, uh, an, an insanely talented composer and there's um i actually a really fun story um it's not very fun for me oh yes and you know <laughs> i'm gonna talk about this story so yeah. <laughs> i had a very very strange dream about my friends uh so two of my friends i think i think you were there as well but you weren't one of the strange people so essentially <laughs> there's this music at the beginning of uh of the, opening credits, the opening the, credits yeah shimming violins yeah yeah and, and, the, and the, uh, it's sort of like ooh, sound yeah that's ooh, and, our, our rendition of the yeah yeah, yeah. and and the 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 like the static sound like ee, mm. that was in that was the soundtrack of one of my nightmare dreams and it's horrific I have, a horrific <laughs> soundtrack to have to one of your nightmares so, so that soundtrack was playing while um two of my friends just looked stared at me like this and just went I'm incredibly disappointed in you. And it was just like, and it, it was actually terrifying. Like literally, I'm not, I can't play the music because it's copyrighted, but um, I'll put it we'll in the description. It, so I'll we'll give it, it. Our rendition was given there. It's basically, Hopefully. Ee- <laughs> perfect. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, perfect. We're not going to get right. copyrighted now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we might. It's a bit too accurate, you know. <laughs> God, yeah. We're, 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 we could we're have been violent. there in 1979 Phil, Phil, we could, in, in the recording studio. We're, we're in the, the recording studio yeah. right now. <laughs> 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 really Scott's just there watching us giving us, giving us like, a thumbs up uh, yeah. well, well done Great. guys well, 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 exactly good job good job <laughs> Um, yeah, so mm. the intro is is incredible, and mm. it sort of reminded me as well of the intro of um, 2001 Space Odyssey, which yes, is very clever. With the monoliths, uh, the very, very, yeah. very, very, very another very disturbing sound, well, creepy soundtrack, much yeah, less disturbing but film. But it uses that classical piece. It uses various mm. classical pieces, actually. The famous one, um, also Sprach Susanna, where it's called the... Uh, the one with the trumpets. Yeah, 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 that one, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty insane. But Alien. So the whole mm. concept. Uh, a lot of people might know about Alien through um, uh, the Alien Isolation game, possibly. Indeed, if, um, one of yeah. one, probably one of the greatest um, games to capture the original sense of the film. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's kind of like. It's it's it is sort of like um, you know people sort of running away from a an alien virus. It's like um, a Hammer horror film in space. Effectively, that's the that's the yeah, basic premise yeah. of it. It's kind of like yeah, so sort of maybe a sort of not really a zombie film, but look, sort of more like a like parasite. a Freddy, like Halloween or like uh, Jason or something in in space, basically. Effectively, yeah. So. This they they set out to this expedition. I can't remember what they're actually doing. They're trying they to were, rescue this other effectively ship, isn't that, wouldn't they? What no? Effectively, that was um, they're a mining ship who are coming back from a voyage oh, to yeah, another planet, yeah. and they get distracted by the SOS 
uh, or what looks like an SOS signal from uh, another planet, and that's why they're waking up from hy- hypersleep halfway to Earth. And so, uh, it's a standard procedure, they have to check out the these um, SOS signals. Yeah. And uh, so when the first hints, uh, the, one of these, one of the dodgiest characters in the film is the android character, and he's working for the company Wayland Utani, who who wants to study this alien species. Yeah. And they already know about it beforehand, so he's sort of he's very much uh, passionate that they they go ex- investigate the SOS signal as part of the effective protocol of the ship. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's um, yeah, that's effectively the premise of what they were doing. So it's, it's the, it heightens that sense of violation. The fact that's not they weren't going to like most horror films where you go to investigate the the creepy thing in the closet. And yeah, then no, it, no, like, no, jumps yeah. out and like eats you. Yeah, but yeah. In this film, they weren't. It was like there was violation of both um, the company and the uh, and the alien itself. Oh no! Absolutely, and and oh yeah, just checking it's still recording because <laughs> that's uh yeah that perfectly summed it up basically. Um, because I think what's really important about Alien uh is, you know, the the, the importance of slow pacing in horror films. I think mm. it's very very, um, it's you know sometimes um, one can make the mistake of wanting you know too much horror too quickly, and then yeah. it's over with, and then. Right oh no, it's not really too scary anymore, but I think the genius of Alien is that it's so slow-paced and you get gradually more... You, you, it's it's sort of like metaphorically it tugs at your brain and it's like it's reeling it's very, you in. It's a very sort of... It, until like, it jumps back at you. It's sort of, it gradually it's, sucks you in from the very first... It, it, it doesn't like... Like some horror films sort of... You get there's a there's a there's a jump scare and it gives you relief from it afterwards. Maybe yeah. like a, a comment where like it never gives like, you relief. Oh, not this film. It, brills, it very much, very much. <laughs> watching it in the cinema as well for the first time, I imagine that like, that sense of um, like the first the first death in the film is obviously the uh, chest burster scene. Well, yeah, it's a very a very gruesome and shocking thing, especially. Uh, I think very the, iconic scene. Apparently, the actors had no idea that was going to happen, so all their reactions are entirely genuine in the film. So that it heightens the fun fact, it heightens the sense of um, brilliant. Which is like, but the thing is, after that, it's um, the film doesn't let off you at all. Of course, there's a sense of surprise, like suddenly this tiny aliens become a massive um, killing machine. But that sort of a, the film never like lightens the dissension after that. It's all going straight to try and solve the issue. There's no sort yeah. of like messing around. Yeah, which yeah, that tension. yeah. That's it's it's literally just all a reel in, and it's and it's so clever how you know it. it you can sort of tell that it is a film from the 70s because of the sound design mm. but it's not like and and that's just that's just characteristic of the time that's not a bad thing yeah but it's just so strangely modern as well it's it's, it's not like you, it's the graphics it's very are timeless. particularly particularly yeah particularly effective the whole the ship the way it's it's like the way it's um shot uh, for example the scene where they're landing on the planet and there's sort of that tunnel vision section which are very much ingrained in my mind where it's like the, the cubes are just slowly getting smaller as they as yeah. they uh, the, the, um, they most the planet is like some kind of uh um echolocation device or something where they yeah, can yeah. spot the, the solid object and uh, it looks so effective it could be in like it's um i think one you know alien isolation they um take that sort of vintage uh, futuristic sci-fi feel and apply yeah, yeah. it to the game, which was what makes the game uh, so like so effective in that sense of recapturing oh, the original yeah. feel. It's definitely one you should play. Either I will be playing it at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll definitely get it at some point. Um, yeah, when it's, on, when it's on the sale, I think it's quite expensive. So when it's like definitely when mm, it's on sale, mm. we have Outlast Two. So when we get we do, next yes. to the opportunity, me and Cameron will be playing uh, Outlast Two. Indeed, uh, because. Uh, I, I'm just really interested because I've never actually I've, I've seen some footage of the game but only up to a certain point it's, I, I so, watched a bit of uh, Jacksepticeye actually playing it it's, it's, sort of, it's, yeah. it's inter- a very different setting it's in the mountains isn't it uh, yeah. and then there's this sort of crazy religious cult going on there yeah. Sort of, yeah. it's quite cliche but very well done from what I can see so I'm looking forward to getting into that <laughs> looking forward to the, the, the let's play yeah definitely mm. um, yeah I mean what I was going to say like Alien is just uh, a perfect horror film really it's like, just one, so good. one thing to talk about is the the sexual element. So, um, one of the key uh, aspects of this um, sexual element is um, is um, inherent in the design of the uh, yeah. the alien itself. So, uh, H. R. Geiger, who was the original designer of the film, um, he created the uh, face hugger design and the xenomorph design. Um, so, effectively, I was reading an article a while back, which um, highlights the um, the very sexual, um, the very sexual nature of much of the imagery of the alien throughout the film, and also the nature of the way it sort of impregnates, and then it, it 
it violates you by like coming out of your chest <laughs> in, a, in a lovely fashion. It's um, genuinely it, horrible. <laughs> the, way, the way it progresses from uh, being more female sexual imagery to male sexual imagery, this sort of inherent human fear of the idea of um, there's a very dark theme such as rape, was sort of highlighted in the film, which makes yeah. it that much more of a horrible um, concept and much more disturbing, which, which is one thing that sets it apart from the other alien films, actually. Um, for example, Aliens doesn't have quite the same themes present, and that's what makes that first film so... Uh, incredibly um, disturbing in that sense. Yeah, it is, it is uh, like genuinely horrible to watch. Like mm. I know that there's one of the deaths is pretty horrific. Like yes, in terms of the, that, the uh, the last the second the last death in the film, um, particularly, yeah, uh, well, it's quite. I mean, you'd have you'd have to watch it. I suppose. I suppose if we, uh, if, if you're watching this, you've probably already watched um, Alien. I imagine. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 they, they'll, they'll have watched yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. So I, I think it's really interesting how um, they play on that as well. And and as we've talked about. All these films that we've talked about seem to reflect an element of our reality, and I mm. think that's what makes good horror really, really good because uh, because the of the connection. Yeah, yeah. The, re- the the almost relatability to it, mm. and and the connection to our real world is really, yes. really fascinating. Um, so uh, this has been really, really fun. Very uh, much thank so. You, yes, very nice thank to talk you, about. Yeah, uh, for coming on the podcast, Cameron. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and. Um, we and Max maybe as well um, mm. and uh, lots of other people uh, will be coming on this podcast because I might make it a thing because it's really, mm. really fun and mm. it's just uh, really great to talk about stuff and like sometimes I, 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 I'll get comments and I, I you know, I, I hope to get like uh, comment if you are interested in more podcasts and mm. you, you're interested in something we talked about or or something. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> or something. It's been, long, it's been a long day. Um, yeah, so like this video if you really liked it. Like this podcast if you really liked it. Um, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of the podcast, more of my videos. I make vlogs, I make gaming videos if you're new here. Um, yeah, so click subscribe. Click the bell icon for notifications Ooh. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I know that Max ended the last one by just going, click the bell icon. And he just clapped, and then he just, and then the video ends. I thought that was just a perfect way to end it, really. Um, yeah, should we end, Thank it, with, you should we end it with a Thanos snap? Three. Oh. <laughs>